my son will inherit and as a fair baby will receive nothing. I'm 26 female and I have a 5-year-old son. My ex-husband, 29, cheated on me with his co-worker, Bethany, 28. I was two months pregnant with our second child when I found out, and Bethany was going to have his child. I miscarried and my ex left the house to be with her, and it's been two years since the child was born. My mother-in-law has been supportive of me. It has nothing to do with my ex or his mistress and their child, up until a few months ago. I adore my in-laws and we're extremely close. My mother-in-law and parents are the best of friends. She loves me and her grandson more than anything, and this infuriates my ex-husband's affair partner. My in-laws cut contact with them straight away. Bethany was jealous that her child would never know the love of grandparents, but at least her son has a father. This brings us to the problem. Unfortunately, my mother-in-law has been very ill for a while, and so she's updated her will. My ex-husband was an only child, so he would have gotten everything. But now, my son will inherit her house, villa, and money. I will receive a large portion of her money and all of her belongings. Until my son turns 18, it will be in my trust, and if I pass before that, my parents will take care of it. And they do know this. That is, once they caught wind of her being ill, my ex-husband begged for forgiveness. The mistress started being nice towards her when she started fights and called her horrible names before and forced her to be around his baby. My mother-in-law is bad-bound, but she says she wants to leave with a bang so she'll endure this. I haven't encouraged her to do anything, and this is her choice alone. They want her money, and her son thinks he's still included in the will. He also thinks his child will now be acknowledged by his grandmother and will also receive money. Now, my mother-in-law hasn't actually said she's forgiven them. She despises her son and his mistress for tearing apart our family. She wants to reward those who deserve it and get revenge in one go. The mistress keeps on hinting on how her child will grow up and attend a great college and other money-involved things whenever she's around my mother-in-law. Actually, mother-in-law's niece, my cousin by marriage, has overheard her on the phone discussing what wallpaper she wants in the dining room when she moves in and how my mother-in-law has no taste whatsoever. She also mentioned how she'll finally be able to take down pictures of my son when my ex owns the house. Too bad for her, it will belong to my son, and no changes will be made until my son becomes 18. It is his grandmother's home, and he should be allowed to cherish it in the way she's decorated it. I'm not really allowed to tell anyone, and though this revenge will be satisfying, I'll have to lose my mother-in-law. It's kind of a win-lose situation, and I dread the day when she'll take her last breath. She means a lot to me. I love her. But she wants this for her grandson, and is said that she cannot rest until she knows her son and his mistress have been punished. She wants this because her childhood was also ruined because of her father and his affair partner. She wants my son to know that he was loved and will always be loved. I hope my son will always value the great woman in his life, and I wish he had more time with his grandmother. I might make an update if anyone wants it, though I pray to God it's a long time before that. Edit. Thank you all for listening to me and giving me advice. As for those who are angry at me for not asking my mother-in-law to include my ex's new child, I can't do anything about that. Yes, I'm happy and that's selfish, but I'm going to put myself and my son first. That child contributed to my miscarriage and is one of the reasons why my son has not had a father for over two years. I can't change my mother-in-law's mind about him. I do pity the baby, but it's not up to me to fend for it. It's not my responsibility. I've tried talking to my mother-in-law, but just had her whole childhood ruined by her father, who made his affair children his top priority. This is why she wants nothing to do with it or her son. He knows that she went through so much because of cheaters, yet he decided to do the same to her. He has seen his grandfather favor his aunt and uncle over his mother. If this happened to you, you wouldn't be so happy about sharing yet another thing with a baby. Thank you again to those who have listened to me and have read out the nice comments to my mother-in-law. We've had a great laugh together. The mistress would send me photos of her ultrasounds after I miscarried, either to me or to my family. In the first envelope, she sent a letter full of the nastiest things about me, my son, and my miscarried baby. She'd even tagged me in social media on an account I didn't know about. It was an invitation to her baby shower. She has done plenty of disgusting and hurtful things to me regarding my miscarried baby. The people who are coming at me in the comments would not be as civil as me if anything like that happened to them. Ignoring her child is honestly the best option. I do not want my son to grow up with her son. And to those who are insulting and saying rude things about my dying mother-in-law, you are truly disgusting. Now for the top comments. I'm sorry that this situation is bittersweet though. I hope your mother-in-law gets better. Thank you. I hope she gets better too.
Imagine if the mother-in-law gets better, and the true colors of your ex and the affair partner come back out now that the inheritance is a long way off. Please have the will overlooked for the lawyer just in case he contests it and to prevent any loopholes. Yes, she's had that done by two separate lawyers, and my ex-husband willingly gave me full custody of our son, so he shot himself in the leg. As soon as she passes, your ex is going to be in that house and trying to establish himself. Ask the lawyers how to mitigate that, because you will be grieving and shouldn't have to endure that right then. Mistress and your ex will absolutely not last when they realize they are not getting the house. Divorce within a year of finding out, I reckon. They aren't married, though I hear she's been wanting it from the moment my scummy ex left my doorstep. I'm in contact with some of my ex's colleagues, and the amount of crap they tell me makes me laugh. A few things are a bit sad, but they deserve it, not gonna lie. Nothing life-threatening or to do with health, obviously, thank God, because they still have a kid to look after. Mistress has a bit of a money-spending problem, a large problem actually, and they have lots of fights over it. Her parents hate my ex for not allowing their precious child to spend more. He complains about this at work to some of his friends. He's had an emotional affair with someone in his office because he thinks the mistress has been cheating on him too, as in sleeping around. They can't trust one another. Still, what comes around goes around, though I hope they can resolve this for the sake of the kid. Sometimes the stupid loser whines at work about how he should have never left me for his mistress. But then again, he says he's glad he left our son behind. Next story. My dad wants to rebuild our relationship, but I have no interest in him. My 25 male father has always favored my sister. Not only does the family call him out on it, he admits to it. His defense is that my sister looks so much like our late mother that he can't help but spoil her. My sister caught on this and used it to her advantage. If she wanted something from the store, all she had to say was please dad, and he would get it for her. If I asked for something, my dad would ask me what I've done to deserve it, and if I couldn't think of something good I did recently, I didn't get it. Whenever my sister did something bad, she would begin to cry and dad would easily forgive her. If I did something bad, I always had to face the full consequences. Dad would leave work and come get my sister from school for anything as small as a splinter. While I could be throwing up and Dad would say he couldn't leave work, and I had to tough it out. I tried so hard to earn his love and attention, but nothing worked. I tried excelling at school, I tried acting out, and I even forced myself to get into his hobbies in hopes we would bond that way. The day I gave up is the day I found out how little my dad cared about me. I was turning 15. The plan was for me, my dad, sister, uncle, and two friends to go on an arcade that was a two-hour drive away. The day before my birthday, my sister got the sniffles, and dad said she was in no condition to travel, and we would have to cancel the trip. I tried to convince him to leave her with our grandparents, but he didn't want to leave her to suffer alone, so he told me to call my friends and tell them, while he went and called my uncle. After we walked away, I went and cried my eyes out. About a gallon of tears later, I got a call from my uncle telling me not to worry. He would take us to the arcade. I ended up having a great time and forgot all about my dad and sister. But when I got back and my sister saw all my prizes, she asked if she could have one. I said sorry, no, these are for my birthday trip. Later my dad came to me and told me it would be nice if I gave my sister something. I replied with something along the lines of, you know what would be nice? If you didn't try to cancel my birthday over my sister's runny nose. My dad called me selfish and said my sister's health was more important and I would be a good big brother if I gave her something. I still didn't give her anything. After that incident, I gave up on my father and just focused on those who actually cared for me. My father either didn't notice or didn't care. As long as he had my sister, that's all he needed. He didn't start caring until it made him look bad in the public eye. My senior year, the band had an award ceremony. I didn't even bother asking my dad to attend. Instead, I asked my aunt and uncle. My dad didn't notice until he saw not only the family post on Facebook, but the school as well. A lot of the comments on the post were asking why my dad wasn't there, so he confronted me and asked why I hadn't told him, said he would have loved to go. I replied, in all the years of me winning awards you've never showed up to support me, why would I expect you to start now? Later I find out for my cousin that my dad called my uncle to fuzz at him for taking his place, and my uncle told him the same thing I did. For a brief moment of my life, my dad seems to start caring about me, but then my sister won a sports award and he forgot about me again. I moved on, went to college and made a life for myself. I saw my dad every now and then, but our relationship stayed the same. 
Then, one day, my dad's worst fear came true. My sister moved on from him. She moved across the state to be near her boyfriend and his family. My dad cried to anyone who would listen. He would say how he's alone and has no one, but his obsession with my sister not only drove me away, but everyone else in the family as well. He showed up to my house one day and wanted to talk. He wanted to try and fix our relationship and have father-son bond. He said he didn't mean to mistreat me and that he just misses our mom so much. And my sister was all he had left of her, so that's why he acted that way. That's when I pointed out that I'm our mother's child as well. And he basically just told me he didn't see me as his child. He tried to backtrack and say that's not what he meant, but I wasn't having it. I told him I had no interest in him or having a relationship with him. He'll still try to get involved with me every now and then, but I keep him at an arm's length. I feel that it's too late to repair all the damage he has done. Wow. So, I guess you weren't your mother's child too, since your sister is all he had left? Glad to move on. You were a kid who lost a mom and a dad in a sense, and there's no coming back from that. Out of curiosity, do you still talk to your sister? Not much. I'll text her to check up every now and then, but that's it. Ah, I also had a sister who was daddy's little girl, whereas I was daddy's other daughter. And he doesn't understand why now at 23, I still absolutely do not desire any type of relationship with him. You don't owe him anything, and don't have to reconcile if you don't want to. Do what makes you happy, nothing less than that. I really don't get parents who are like that. I dated a girl who was a daddy's little girl, and she told me how much her father favored her over her siblings, and he'd even frequently say to all of them that she was the favorite. For example, if he bought them chocolate or anything, he'd always give more to her, and say that's because she's the favorite. It baffled me that she also thought it was normal, and she didn't see anything wrong with it. She had a younger brother and two older ones. He'd also severely beat all her brothers, but he'd never even be harsh with her. Only her mother would try to discipline her, but the father would stop it. The funniest thing is that she said that she agreed in physically beating children as a form of discipline. Like no wonder, you were never the one being beaten. The mom did not beat her or any of their other children though. Last story, I am not the mother. I'm 43 female and recently married a man, 45 male, who has 3 kids, 12 male, 10 female and 7 male, from a previous relationship with his ex, 42 female. My ex-husband of 8 years had a degenerative disease. We weren't able to have children, and he eventually succumbed. I was ecstatic about being a stepmom. I was determined not to be that stepmom. I wouldn't demand that the children call me mom and accept me as mom from the get-go. They should take their time. Well, they absolutely hate being told anything by me. I can't enforce chores without being told I'm the worst person in the world. Husband even told me to stop being harsh to them. And just because I married him, it doesn't give me the authority. I worked my butt off to help 12 male with a science fair project. But I wasn't allowed to attend his presentation because his bio mom wanted to go. I bought 7 male the plushie he wanted. And my mom went off on me for taking the experience away from her. And husband took her side. 10 female absolutely hates everything about me, my voice, my mannerisms, my existence. She isn't shy about that either and will let me know, and husband says it's because I'm trying too hard to be her mother, when I'm not. I feel a crippling amount of anxiety when it's our turn with them. I feel like I'm unwanted in my own home. I brought this up with my husband, and he got mad at me and told me to get over myself and that I am not the mother. I am not the mother. Okay, so I cooked for myself only. My cooking is nothing to scoff at. I went to chef school in my home country. I specialized in several types of ethnic cuisine. I worked at fine dining restaurants. And when husband complained, I said that maybe Bayou mom should have packed some food for them. Because I am not the mother. I am washing my own dishes and my own dishes only. I clean my own space and do my own laundry because I am not the mother. I don't enforce chores because I am not the mother. The children need help with math and languages. I said that maybe husband should pay for a tutor, because I'm not the mother. Finally, he told me I'm being petty and I lost it. I said that they do expect me to be the mother, but only on the boring or difficult things. I am not allowed any of the fun or rewarding parts of being a mother. They're using me and I'm done with it. He apologized and said that he didn't mean it that way. So I asked what exactly he meant, and he said he doesn't know, but is really sorry and he will try to do better from now on, but that he can't do this without me. Now I don't know what to do. Edit, I will do my best to reply to everyone. In short, yes, I rushed my marriage. My sweet and loving ex-husband left this world far too early. 
leaving me heartbroken and lonely. Then comes this guy offering me a full family, full of life. I was a fool. I'll be looking for a therapist, possibly a lawyer. I'm overwhelmed with all the support. I'll be thinking long and deep how to proceed. Thanks to all of you. Now for the comments. I nearly posted asking if he married you to be the nanny, but I'm sure that if the nanny tried to enforce a rule, he'd back her up. Genuinely, you are married to a man who is not your partner and does not have your back. Maybe some couples counseling sessions to try and work out what you need from each other going forward, or maybe you need a better spouse. And to be honest, if you want bio kids, this sounds like a really fraught situation to bring one into. I think he feels guilty for splitting up their family and tries to make sure he always takes their side no matter what. Bio mom is extremely competitive towards me. She's very eager to let me do the boring things she can't be asked to, but thinks I'm invading her territory if I try to do anything fun with the kids. She loves getting praised for how well the kids do in math, but she never lifted a finger to help them. She's awful at math, so I did it all. But then I'm told I'm wrong and overstepping if I expect any acknowledgement for that. If he feels guilty for splitting up the family, that's on him. He needs to support his actual wife and not let his kids verbally mistreat you. They don't have to like you, but they shouldn't be allowed to be so combative. It sounds like him and ex both are treating you like a live-in maid. Dad should be tutoring his kids. During their stay at her house, Dad should be the doing person because, as he said, you're not the mom, you're not the parent. They are the children of your husband, and during his time with them, he should be fully in charge of all things kid-related. Laundry, meals, homework, entertainment, bedtime, you name it. And it's Dad's job. I'd go so far as to be away as much as possible when the kids are there. Shopping, visiting, library time, whatever. Just away. Too many women who marry men with kids get those kids dumped on them without any authority attached. Enough already. He even insisted that I stay at home to care for the kids. I did it because I really, really like kids. I made a huge mistake. 